المكتب التعاوني للدعوة والإرشاد وتوعية الجاليات بخميس مشيب الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وآله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما It's always my pleasure to be here and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us to the right path and make whatever we learn in this place and other places for his sake and uh, knowledge without benefit is useless uh, today uh, there is an incident in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam which indicates how uh, skillful shrewd Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was in handling difficult situations especially when it comes to cross-cultural communication as you know when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to Medina uh, Medina was uh, multi-ethnic, multilingual, and multi-religious context. So it's very complicated in this sense. But what really uh, proved over time that these contexts, such kind of a context, is a fertile land for da'wah because uh, this religion is for all people. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ, uh, before he came to Medina, there was a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi, who was expecting the advent of a prophet. And when he heard about some of the Ansars, the people of Aus al Khazraj going to Mecca, meeting with somebody calling himself Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and claiming to be a prophet he was thinking about that okay he was thinking about that uh, this man was called al Hussein ibn Salam al Hussein ibn Salam and he was expecting the rival prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to check and test if that man was a prophet or not, because he had the knowledge of the Torah. Okay, he has the knowledge of the Torah. And he was highly respected among his own community, among his own community. One day, and you know the migration of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was during summer time, okay? And he was cultivating his dates on the top of one of the trees, <laughs> And he heard some of the Ansar saying, some of the Jews saying, Ya Bani Qila, qad jaa sahibukum. Yani they nicknamed them with Bani Qila, yani belittling them. Okay? Your friend that you've been waiting for has just come. So he jumped down from the tree, running to see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the extent that his family members were concerned, said, why would you do such a thing? He said, I want to see if he's a prophet. I want to see if he's a prophet. Today we have a lot of interruption because of the exams. Huh? <laughs> Allah make it easy for you. So, uh, his aunt said to him, Hussein, had it been Musa ibn Imran, alayhi salatu wasalam, you wouldn't have done more than this. He said, if he's a prophet, he's a brother to Musa alayhi salam and tells you that the Prophet Sallallahu has been mentioned in the Torah and the Injil as Allah, as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentioned in the Quran يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ The signs of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that given in the Old Testament and uh, New Testament they know him as they would know their own children if you have a child among millions can you any point out your child? you see? you cannot miss him uh, this is to this extent. So he went to the Prophet Sallallahu and saw how he used to speak. He saw how people received him. He greeted the Prophet Sallallahu then started moving around the Prophet. The Prophet realized that he was looking for something. He was looking for the stamp of 
prophethood. And the Prophet ﷺ was wearing a ridai, a garment. Okay. He, he lowered his garment for this man. This is a da'wah. You see, this is indirect da'wah. Because the Prophet ﷺ knew that that was a Jew, a rabbi, of knowledge. He's different from others. His questions will be different. He should be treated differently. Anzilu nasa manazilam. You put people in their own yani, suitable positions. So the man saw the stamp of Nubuwa, of prophethood, in between the shoulders of Prophet Muhammad. He immediately accepted Islam. No discussion. Because he knew the description of Prophet Muhammad. And he was highly recognized among his people. He was respected for being a great scholar, a rabbi. So look how this man is using a new strategy of da'wah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approved of. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, the elders of the Jewish community will come to see you. Now, the advent of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been uh, very well planned. This is, Alhamdulillah, Allah will give me some work to do, strategic planning. And this, the hijrah, the migration of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one of the most successful plans in history because it, it went through many phases until the advent of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he came the ground was fully furnished for the emergence of the Muslim state in Medina and the Prophet Sallallahu took all precautions all possible means into consideration with teamwork along with his companions in Mecca and in Medina even using other means, non-Muslim uh, support, and all, all means were taken into consideration. So, this man said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, when he, Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu asked him, said, what's your name? He said, al Husayn ibn Salam. said, no, you are Abdullah ibn Salam. And he gave him the name of Abdullah ibn Salam, radiyallahu uh, We know very few, there are many Jews and Christians in Medina who became Muslim during the advent time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But because of our being a bit away from the seerah, of detailed seerah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know very little about these incidents. And the practice of Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in da'wah is an, a model for us to follow. So he said, what are you suggesting, Abdullah? He said, I suggest that I hide somewhere else because I know the mentality of those people, okay? And they will come see you, welcoming you to Medina, kind of saying. But I want them to, I want you to ask them about me, about my caliber, my knowledge, my position among them, and see how they respond, okay? And in that way, I'll tell you what to do next. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he hid in a place that they couldn't see him when they came. They came to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They spoke to him. He spoke to them. And he said, what do you think of al Husayn ibn Salam? They said, he's our rabbi. He said, what do you think of his knowledge? He said, he's among our best scholars. <laughs> he said, what do you think if he becomes a Muslim? He said, Ma'ad Allah. We seek refuge with Allah that he would become Muslim. No way. He cannot be. He's in a position he will not take. But in that moment, Abdullah ibn Salam came out and said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an amdha rasulullah. He didn't want to embarrass them. But sometimes there are certain da'wah methods that you have, you've got to follow with different types of people. Abdullah ibn Salam knew the mentality of those Jewish elders because Islam has come to challenge their own control of their own community. Okay? Uh, even when they came to ask the Prophet وسلم, about some of the rulings in Islam, he said, find it out in your own Torah, in the Old Testament, in your own book. Okay? Because the Prophet wanted them to realize that what I brought was from the same source where the Torah came to Musa alayhi salam. If you really believe in the Torah, 
you should believe in this. You believe in part of the book and parts they don't believe in? Cannot be. Uh, so they were really embarrassed. And this is, embarrassment is one form of da'wah that the Prophet ﷺ sometimes uses to challenge uh, people. Uh, there are people who run a dialogue, the people who run a debate, but people who run a mujadala. They're not interested in the truth. <coughs> But behind them, hundreds of people who need to know the truth. If you discredit those people, then those others would not trust them, that even if they continue following them. And this is a problem that we find in the Muslim world, that we have appointed so-called leaders, <coughs> religious leaders, who are ignorant and make a lot of innovations in their own communities. And the people follow them, thinking that they have knowledge and they have acquired power over time, accumulated power, and a position that people find it difficult to challenge them. And there is no way to get in control of others, not in control, I'm saying, to deliver the message to others, the true message, and they will accept it unless these barriers are moved. And the Prophet ﷺ knew the mentality of those Jewish leaders, that there are many Jews who would like to accept Islam, have good hearts, good minds, and they would like to see the truth. But those people are standing between them and the truth. Anyway, that was a position in which that Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu an wanted to furnish the road for Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that those people will be discredited among even the pagan community that was there in Medina, among not everybody was a Muslim when, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina. You know Abu Darda radiallahu an, he became Muslim later on, although he was sympathetic with the Prophet, and he was one of the great scholars of Islam, the seven fuqaha of Medina. Okay, Abu Darda radiallahu an. And one day, inshallah, we'll talk about the methodology of da'wah Abu Darda. So, you know, even those people, he was not a Muslim at that time. Okay, uh, for this will furnish the road because. Uh, people of Medina were really looking, they thought, the Jews there thought the Prophet would, become, would come from among them. Even they were threatening Al-Aws al Khazashay, when the Prophet comes among us, we'll crush you. Okay? Yeah. Uh, this was a very important step taken by Abdullah ibn Salam and by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to at least neutralize the very strong influence of those uh, influential Jewish leaders. They have been discredited, now they change. And uh, immediately when he said, Ashhadu wa la ilaha, he said, you are the worst of us. You are the most ignorant of us. <laughs> and they changed in the, on the spot. Uh, they were discrediting themselves, not realizing that they were, they were doing a great service to Islam and Muslims. Because the Prophet ﷺ was telling the truth, and this man realized the truth and accepted it. Uh, we started our يعني, talk this today by just referring to how this deen needs to be supported by all means. Legitimate means. Legitimate means. And how some of the companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't hesitate to sacrifice. And now how Abdullah ibn Salam is not a rabbi anymore. Abdullah ibn Salam is not in control of those people eh, anymore. He became a follower of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu But it's greater for you to be a follower in the true way, rather a leader in the wrong way. You see, uh, we, we get many lessons from that. How those people, when they became, immediately became Muslims, how they gave their full allegiance, full respect, full devotion, to this deen. From the first moment, they were ready to work for it. Sometimes we've been in Islam for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and we, we work as passive consumers. We have never thought of being productive. We attend classes, we read, we believe in Allah and His Prophet, we think Islam is the truth, but we have very little effort to spread it around. 
But the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu from the first moment, he has not made any salah or anything. Just said the shadow of Allah, 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 immediately. Now he's using the means he knew well to uh, stand beside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to strengthen the leadership of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, to discredit the uh, devilish role that was done by some of those uh, Jewish leaders at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. غفر الله لي ولكم وللمسلمين أجمعين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى صحبه وسلم سليم كثيرا